good overnight here in the great land of Dominion, back for part three of today's From Day One. Art Bell with our Witchcraft and Curses Specialist Tish Owens, waiting right on the other side. And without further ado, let's actually get to both of them right now. The dialogue sequence with Art Bell. Please coordinate your phalanges and call 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. All right. This woman obviously knows what she's talking about. Tish is her name. And uh, Tish Owen, and you might want to join the conversation. So here comes the dreaded talk. <laughs> If you want to call us, uh, now's the time, and we'll sort of fit you in as we go along. It's area code 952-225-5278. Scrambling for a pencil? That's first you dial one. Then 952-225-5278. You're welcome to join us there and or by Skype. Skype is remarkably effective because it makes you sound more authoritative, because you sound so much better. So consider doing it if you've got an iPhone or an Android, whatever you've got. doesn't matter. Even uh, the pads, whatever, you know, as long as they, they can get Skype. And all you do is you go download Skype. It's free. And then when you become familiar with Skype, and you will fairly quickly, Simply add us uh, as a contact. Don't go to where you dial. That's the mistake everybody makes. Uh, go to uh, the little plus sign up at the top of Skype uh, and then add a contact. And in, in this case, you would put in for North America, America and Canada, MITD51, as in midnight in the desert, MITD51. And then we'll be in your contact list. And you can call us any time you feel like it. Just press that button, and it will dial from anywhere in the world free. Outside the country, the same ability exists, except it's MITD55. Let me repeat that, MITD55. And then it will just be there in your contact list. It is so cool. We live in such a, a wonderful age where you can tweet somebody to death. Uh, once again, here's Tish. All right, so uh, Tish, as we gather people for you, there's a – well, let me first go over here. I get messages, you know, as we're on the air by computer through something called the wormhole. And I would like to ask a few of these, if that would be all right. Sure, it'd be great. Tony asks, noticed in the picture that you, uh, she has a wart on her chin. In the Not spot, In the spot you would expect a witch to have it. Ask her if it's real. <laughs> it's a mole. It's a mole. Okay, a mole, it's right? A mole. And since this picture was made, I actually had it removed because it was changing shape and it was a little scary. Okay. So I don't have it. I kind of miss it. Uh, is it really in the spot you would expect a witch to yeah. have it? Yeah. Go oh. look at the picture. Really? Um. And so why do witches traditionally have that on their chin in that spot? Well, I think that it helps the mystique of which is being old and scary and living at the end of the lane in the deep woods and doing potions and curses and whatnot. And so, you know, to be ugly and have warts and moles, but yeah, it's not, it's not a word. It was a mole and I, I do miss it quite frankly. All right. Um, it, all right, please ask her to elaborate on the, the supposed curse on Cromwell and the curse on her friend that she's attempting to remove. I, uh, I'm not removing that one. She's getting help elsewhere. But, but um, really? It, for, so for Cromwell, so the person that I know who was a member of a family who actually aided and abetted Cromwell's nefariousness um, on, on the, on, on, in Ireland – uh, the whole family was cursed, and they were cursed by, legend says, um, an old woman, an old medicine woman who did herbs and cures and, and, and 
uh, potions, and she may have had a wart. I don't know. That's not part of the legend. But that you and your family and generations will be you know, cursed from now until forever. And, you know, I would say and a lot of times when you see curses, especially in Hollywood and on television, they're always killing something. They kill a chicken or they kill – but since Cromwell had killed everything, there wasn't anything left to kill. So there wasn't an animal sacrifice made for that particular curse, but it was made with, you know, blood and guts and anger and emotion and hatred. Is there additional power to be – uh, realized through animal sacrifice. You know, uh, just tell the truth. I I don't I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. There are people that say yes, it does. But but what I practice, why do I need to make animal sacrifice when everything comes from that which is God? Why would I need to? Okay, let okay. let me uh, tell you this. As a talk show host, I have listened to thousands of people, and I have learned over the years, to very carefully listen between the lines. And I think that there's a lot that you know that you wouldn't talk about on the air. Okay, so... Would that it, be right? Well, it, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, although I'm a pretty right, honest yeah. person. But here's what, here's what I think. <laughs> I think that if you think that killing a chicken gives power to your ritual, then it does. Cool answer. Because it, this is about belief, you know? Well, a better word, we'll call it faith. It, let me put it this way. If an animal sacrifice actually did, in what you do, add power, I wouldn't expect you to admit that on the air. Okay. Um, okay, and here's somebody who's coming at you, all right? All right, I'm scared. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be. Um, basically, they're saying... Where did I find you? It's like uh, you're not the real thing, and uh, someone maybe who thinks she's a witch but really is a fake, that's from Jeff in Portland, by the way, if you want to retaliate. Well, you know, Jeff, I am in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm at 603 8th Avenue South every Tuesday through Saturday, and you can come on down, baby. <laughs> Oh, that's I, good. I like that answer. Um, all right, let's let's take it to the calls. I may go back to the the wormhole. Uh, Wolfman uh, on Skype, you're Hello. on the air with uh, Tish. Wow, thanks for calling, Art. Uh, I didn't. You called me. No, oh, that's right. Um, I, I, okay, I put a spell on to get on the show. Okay. Yeah, I used a spell to get on the show. Okay, yeah, I got that. It, it well, worked. But it worked. Obviously, because here you are. It worked. Yeah, I did. I just had a coven meeting before the show, and I told them about your show. And oh. I told them that it was going to be on Witchcraft tonight, and I didn't even know it was going to be on Witchcraft. I was just guessing, and it worked. <laughs> By the way, I was the guy who came up with Ms. Knight in the Graveyard. Okay, well, sorry we didn't use that. I, I, I fell in love with dead air, and that's what it's going to be. <laughs> That's all right. Well, maybe one time I'll do it from my graveyard at the farm, and uh, you could talk to me from there, and we could have a little bit of that. Take your best shot. Here. All right. Do you have a question for my guest? Well, also I have uh, for the tonight show. I was thinking for your guest would be great witchcraft in the desert. Okay. <laughs> okay. Enough of the names. Do you have a okay. question? <laughs> um, I was wondering what types of candles you use and what colors you use for which spells. Hmm? Um. Pretty traditional, really. Um, I, we actually make for for our shop. We actually make our own candles that we put the the correct oils for what we're trying to create. Uh, we put a stone in each one of the candles, and and they're raked with energy for their particular purpose. There's also a label, and on the back of the label is an incantation. So, you know, typically it's pink is for love, and white is for protection, and black is for banishing, and green is for money, and Purple is to open your third eye and to do meditation. Um, brown is for animals, if you're doing something for your animals. Um, yellow is for power and energy. Um, orange, uh, would uh, you'd use it for, for a sexual energy. So, I mean, pretty, pretty traditional list. It's not, it's not rocket science, but well, it's it um, the colors that correspond to the particular things that you're trying to create. So you're saying uh, just pick one for fun, uh, orange. Right, one for fun. Uh, 
Well, okay, that's right. <laughs> you said sexual energy. Right. To give yourself and or someone else additional sexual energy? Yes, maybe you need a little perk up in your life, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Our... blue pill for that. <laughs> well, there is a blue pill for that, but, you know, it has side effects. <laughs> Actually, now I hear there's a pink pill, too. Candles don't have side which they don't, <laughs> which the, only one in three is gets anything from it, so no, thanks. Um, I'll pass, I'll pass. Only one in three, huh? That's what I heard it the other night. I see, all right. Yeah, it's on CNN, so you know it has to be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't get any started. I'm, um, I'm sorry, a little joke, have to make a little joke. Yeah, that's fine. Kansas City, Missouri, probably, you're on the air, hi. Hi, um... I, you said something earlier about the the huge population all of a sudden. Have you heard anything about indigo children or the rainbow children? Yes. Okay, um, that was my thought. And also, I had a question. Um, my buddy Garrett wants to know if you can tell us a protection spell in detail. Um. Do, I, do we have time for that? Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, sure, so, it's radio um, show. Okay, okay, do we have time for that? okay, so first of all, maybe we should explain the indigo children, which is theoretically there's a lot of people that are coming in that are incarnating because we really need them to be enlightened and to help us to uh, go forward as a species and not blow ourselves up. So, and I think I got that right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, protection spell. So, I would tell you to do this. I would tell you to go and get, mm, you might have to look for this, but a black bag, a little black bag, a little satin black bag, hemlock, which is hard to find, but it's very effective, clove, some salt, a piece of jet stone. Zip it up, tie it up, don't ever open it, put it over your door. Isn't hemlock poisonous? It is. That's why you zip it up and don't ever open it. Okay. Um, and so you can do that, and that's a really good one. Um, I also like to burn a white candle because white is for protection. It dispels the darkness. If you've got somebody that's really, I mean, if, is is this a physical protection that you are needing? Is it spiritual? What's the? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Okay, you just want a protection spell. Yes. Okay, so I would first of all, I would talk about. I would do the bag, but if you if you really, um, I'll give my website here in a little bit, and if you want to send me. Uh, so the email you and I will correspond about this, and I'll help you out. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, uh, 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 salt, 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 salt. Salt to crush your doorways, salt to crush your window seals. And about once a week, vacuum it all up and put down more. Okay? Really? Because it repels negativity, all right? Salt does? Salt does. So start there. Okay. Uh, very interesting. So these things work. These things work. And a lot of what we do and a lot of other people do um, are, are things that are in folklore. It's been handed down 10 million years, you know, just like the thing with the axe handle, probably not 10 million years, but, but where it's been handed down. And so if, if it didn't work, wouldn't we quit doing it? One would think. One yes. would think because it is one of the signs of being insane, right? All right. Well, so here's yet another question for you, uh, and it is this. Uh, is it possible – um, to be a Catholic, let's say, a, a practicing Catholic, and listening to this show, realize that something you say does work, and give it a try without, you know, having to, uh, gosh, I don't know, unload in confession uh, the next week. I, I think that there are... I will quite frankly tell you that the number of people that come into my establishment, they're not all pagans. There's a lot of Baptists and some Catholics and, you know, whatever else, because they are desperate for an answer. And and so they'll burn a candle or they'll do some incense or they'll do a spell. And I don't think that it's – I'll tell you a story. I had a girl that worked for me. Remember, I'm in the South. Had a girl that worked for me, and she was uh, of mixed heritage, and but she had been raised in, in Kansas, and so she was raised around around white people, mm -hmm. and so she worked for me on the uh, on the weekends on Saturdays. Very intelligent girl, which as a matter of fact is now in medical school, right. and 
And so we were there one day, and a bunch of little old ladies, and when I tell you little old ladies, I mean 60s and 70s little old ladies. And they were little African-American ladies. And they came in, and they wanted some of this, and they wanted some of that, and they wanted some, you know, we're going to put pepper in his shoes, and we're mm-hmm. going to do this. All, all of these different things that they needed that, for spell work and candles and some oils. And can you make me an oil to, you know, to, to make this guy go away or to make my daughter's boyfriend leave or whatever? Right. So, you know, we spent about an hour making stuff and doing stuff. And so they left, and I stepped outside, and uh, I was sitting on the front porch. Uh, indulging in a bad habit, and so the and this girl's about 16, 17. She came in, she said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. And she says, all those ladies that just came in and bought stuff, they're not pagan, are they? I said, no, sweetheart, they're Baptist. <laughs> and she said, I don't understand. And I said, in the in the South, there's a lot of people who really see no difference in the world or no difficulty in doing a spell on Saturday night and going and singing the choir on Sunday. Yeah, well, they're Baptists, it's the same thing. They're Baptists who want action. That's right. They want it right now. <laughs> and they haven't got time to wait. So, you know, yes, but do other people who are not pagans do spells? Yeah, yeah they absolutely they do. do. All right, so then you're not above if somebody comes to you and tells you, uh, I don't know what kind of story, you know, some sad scary story that puts you on their side and they want a spell to cause somebody else great grief, you're not beyond telling them how to do it. Well, I'm going to warn them, though. And I'm going to tell them, yeah, you might want to think about this. Um, I'm not going to do it for them. I will sell them the component the components with which to do it, and I will send them away with a warning. And then their karma is in their own hands. I feel the same way. I warn people about shows like this, and if they don't want to All listen, the time. <laughs> then they can go away. Um, That's no right. problem. That's right. All right. Very good. On Skype, uh, Zara Khan, is that right? Yeah, that's me. Um, Zara Khan, welcome to the program. If you have a device, extinguish it, please, and go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say hello to Tish. I'm one of her, uh, I'm the producer, actually, of the radio show that she's, uh, she's on, Green Egg Radio. Oh, really? Sure is. How you doing, hon? I'm doing well. feeling a lot better, dear. Yeah. And I wanted to say to our friend in Portland that you have not talked to a witch until you talk to Tish. <laughs> and uh, she knows her stuff very well. I appreciate that. All right. I apologize for the echo while you hear it. Yeah, a little bit, uh, but it's all right. Um, and it's good to hear from you. And uh, so you're saying... To our friend in Portland, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. That I like. Thank you very much for the call. And uh, Nice to have defenders. Uh, well, it's always nice to have defenders. Is right. That's right. That's um, right. Let's go here to, I think, Felton, California, somewhere in California. Oh, hi, me? You, yes. <laughs> hi. Uh, hello, Tish. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. I'm Joy. Um, uh, Art, good evening. Good evening. I just wanted to let you know that um, I used to be a former editor of the Green Egg, too. Oh, wow. Hot dog, okay. And my husband was the original editor. He actually did a mimeograph back in the 60s. <laughs> uh, the Green Egg, what is that anyway? It's a publication, it's a, right? It's a, it's a publication. It's a Pagan magazine. It's the oldest one. Um, the oldest one that ever existed. Um, that ever really? existed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The Green Egg was um, originally the, I guess, the brainchild of, of Oberon Zell. Now he's called Oberon. He was Tim Zell originally. And um, he created this magazine, which was the first pagan publication ever. All right, listen, and, uh, uh, do you want to hold on? We've got a break, short break coming up. You want to hold on? Sure. All right. Everybody, hold tight. And, of course, we'll be back right after they finish with their audio break, just so we do not pick up any copyright strikes. And it should be done here in just a few seconds. 
as we try to use the Titans to reheal. To cast your ray of light into the darkness, please call 1-952. Call Art. That's 1-952-225-5278. Chish Owen is my guest. And, uh, actually, from what I'm reading, you apparently like her. Let me just note here from Amber. Uh, hey, once again, we love this show. Please have her back as our resident witch. Hands down, my favorite so far in MITD. Somebody who doesn't like the fact that she talked about Hemlock, but hey, you were warned about this show. Somebody else saying, really enjoying this gal. She keeps it real. I nominate her to be the house witch. That's a very high nomination. We could call her the bell witch. <laughs> Somebody else says, uh, Teresa says, great, perfect, actually, for Halloween. And uh, so there you go. Getting better and better. Um, so, Tish, you're back on, and caller, uh, you're back on, too. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, I actually want to actually say, yes, I would like her to be the official art belt. You, too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll Thanks tell you why. Me. Why? Because she is a, 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 a witch with a conscience. Or conscious. I like you, Tish. I, I would love to meet you sometime. Um, I've been I'd working love to with meet Green you too, and, and I'd love to swap stories. Um, and I got a, a note because I checked Facebook in the in the break, and from the editor, um, from our, the editor of Green Egg, and she said to remind everybody that that Green Egg is 47 years old. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and my husband used to be one of the original editors, and um, we. Um, he actually helped establish the Church of All Worlds, which started Green Egg Magazine. Right. And Oberon is opening a new place here in Santa Cruz. Right. And um, I don't know if Arpel wants to know about that or not, but it's going to be the Academy of Ar Ar of Arcana. Really? Yes. It's going to be. It's going to be um, basically a Hogwarts school. It's witchy witch stuff, too. It's awesome. Yeah, and I'm going to be down there on, on uh, Thursday helping unpack and getting them all set up. Give him a big kiss for me, please. All right. I will. I will. I mean, all right, we've got to move on. But, but. And, and he said and he said he, he wanted you to, to say hello. He wanted to say hello to you. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you very uh, much for the call, and, uh, and please feel free to call us again. Uh, let's go to Skype. You're on the air with Tish. Hi. Uh -huh. Yes. It's a pleasure, mate. I just want to let you know that I'm um, just up in a village in Canada here. I wanted to test whether or not she'd be good to uh, be the resident bell witch. <laughs> got myself a bit of a problem here. Um, my girlfriend's a bit of a witch herself. She's an ornithomancer. Fortunately, she's in the other hamlet doing a divination. So, miss, I have a question for you. My Hi. cows are wheezing. She won't rise from the barn floor. Puss is streaming from her snout. She's the last cow we have in the old hamlet. Winter's coming soon. If we don't have the milk, we're good as dead. Tell me, what can I mix together to help the cow? She won't rise from the barn floor. You need, you need cow's milk, and you need honey, really? and you need to mix it up and give it to her warm. Really? Is there a particular time of night? Because my... My girlfriend, like I said, she's a bit of an ornithomancer. This isn't a, a, a cup of tea, but should I, should I draw water from a well at a spring at midnight, or, 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 or will the milk and the honey warm? Will that be enough? I think so. But you can draw water from the spring at midnight if that if you want to. That sounds great. Are you quite sure? Because this is the last cow we've got. Listen, I, I, I want to know how this comes out, all right? Yeah, let right. us know. I, I will call back another time, and I'll let you know for sure. I really appreciate Please. it. Uh, thank you so much for good having a resident good witch luck on. With, good luck if with this cow. works, I think it's good as gold, man. Thank <laughs> you very yep, much. Yep, thank you. Um, all right, so <laughs> that leads me to this, and uh, if the answer is yes, I like it. Do curses and hexes 
work any better if they're cast at midnight. Tish? Sir? Do, do Chris's and Axe's work any better if they're cast at midnight? Okay, so can you hear me? I, maybe I did something I hear you. Wrong. I hear okay. you. Um, it's not midnight because, and those are people always think it's the witching hour, but actually, when the sun, before the sun comes up, so dusk and dawn, because you are literally between the worlds at oh, that yeah. moment. Oh, yeah. It's not daylight, nor is it dark. You are between the worlds. So if you're going to do whatever you're going to do, that's time to do it. Well, that's really interesting. Uh, th there is uh, then more power associated with it. It's more likely to succeed, but. One of the things that we say when we set circle, that we are standing in a place that is not a place, and in a time that is not a time, we are separate from the world as we do our magic. That's gotcha. one of the things that, that we, Wiccans, say when we put circle up. And, and so it's the same thing. And so I'll tell you a story. Um, there's, a, there's so much Civil War energy here in the, in, in, around Nashville. Sure. There were so many battles fought, and there's so oh, many yes. dead people that are still not at rest. But... One of my daughters went to school in Murfreesboro, which is down the road, about 45 miles, 45 minutes. And she was coming home. She'd only been there about a week or so. She was coming home. She was coming up the back road. And she called me and she said, so are you familiar with this Stones River battlefield place? And I said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. And she said, oh, my God, it's so haunted. And, and she has an affinity. She sees dead people. And so she's driving along the back road. It is dusk, and they're all waving at her. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you have two choices. You can either, A, not come home that way, or, B, don't come home that way at dusk. So there's your story. Are ghosts real? Yes. Are ghosts the spirit of, um, you know, humans that were alive and well at one point? And yes, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, are ghosts in their situation permanently, or is it just something that happens until they realize they're dead and they need to move on, or what is their status? Did, did you see the movie The Sixth Sense? I did. Um, great movie. Did A lot of times, and that, like, let's talk about the guys, the Civil War guys. Died violently, died in battle. Right. Still hanging out because nobody has gone and said, you know, you need to turn around, walk in the light, and go to be moving on. And so they're kind of stuck. There are a lot of. Uh, we had a ghost on Second Avenue uh, in one of the shops that I occupied, and she stood on the staircase. And by doing the research, we found out that she had fallen from the staircase and broken her neck. Mm -hmm. She knew she was dead. She was afraid to go on. She was terrified of us when we moved in, which is kind of funny when you think about it. So she was afraid of us because she was afraid we would send her on, and she was scared to go. So our deal with her is, don't was, don't scare the customers, and we won't send you on, which we didn't, and she didn't, and we had a very happy, uh, she's still there, by the way, because really? nobody has sent her on. And and so is it really a matter of have somebody having to send her on? I had a guess last night virtually saying the same thing. Or um, is it just a matter of I don't know something has to be settled within that spirit itself to be able to move on? Right. Why are they still here? And so right. and then too I, and I and I don't know the answer to this. <clears throat> Pardon me, but I will I'll throw it out there anyway. In my family, when someone in my family passes. My grandfather shows up to take them to the other side. And so I guess my question is, everybody doesn't have that. They don't all have this patriarch that comes and shows up and goes, come on, it's this way. You're going to be fine. Um, he, he, for everyone that has died in our family, he showed up. So there wasn't any confusion or I'm lost, but violent death and sudden death very often they're so confused about the situation that they're, they're kind of stuck. They're kind of lost. And so, yeah, it's, it's a matter of, you know, okay. sometimes they just need a little push in the right direction. Got it. All right. Let, let us go um, internationally uh, and say hello there. You're on the air with Tish. Where are you? Hello. 
Hello, Tish. I'm calling from Australia. How are you going? We're, we're quite doing quite well. And uh, wow, thanks for calling. That's very cool. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. And how are you doing, Art? I'm fine. Excellent, excellent. Look, I have, a, I have a question and a comment um, for Tish. Um, so you've expressed that uh, reincarnation or you believe in reincarnation, and um, it's a general consensus that uh, psychic ability is something that you inherit from your parents. Um, so my question is, if you've been reincarnated and you do take things from your past life across to your next one, um, how come everyone is at sort of a different or a skewed psychic ability um, position at the moment? Okay, so here's my theory. I think that everybody has psychic ability. I think that many people are afraid of it or they don't know it or they don't know what it is or they kind of blow themselves off, you know, like, oh, I knew I shouldn't have turned there. I knew that. I did anyway. And and I think that in my particular uh, life, it was very convenient that I had a grandmother who is was it was extremely psychic and so I was not raised thinking it was weird or that it was different or that it was bad and and so I feel like because of that I could expand more as far as my psychic gifts yeah and, okay. but I think that everybody is a little different you know like I was just not talking about my daughter who really does have an affinity she says dead people love her and so she has an affinity that not everybody has i occasionally can see dead people i can certainly hear them and feel them she can just see them standing there she, she has more talent in that and there's different kinds of you know there's clairaudient and there's clairvoyance and and so you see them or you hear them or you smell things that nobody else does and so i think we all have different talents okay yes. so this, this i'm sorry call it this caller is right uh, psychic ability is transferred genetically on now I don't know if it's genetic. I know that my grandmother was very psychic, and she well. didn't discourage me. And she would, you know, and she would when I would say, "Oh, I knew that was going to happen." She would say, "And isn't it wonderful that you knew that?" So I got that kind of encouragement, and I've encouraged my own children to not be afraid of it. And so, whether it's genetic or um, environmental, hmm. and maybe both, maybe both. All okay, right. So it sounds like it's something that you sort of. Um, need to blossom or be encouraged to grow into well i think that you need you know i think that you if you're going to explore your gifts i think you certainly have to i think you have to meditate and go to classes and talk to like-minded people and read the right books and you know do the homework terrific oh and uh just with uh, reincarnation and uh, we did mention how there's plenty of new souls about um i actually had an earlier thought that uh, kind of makes a little bit of sense to me um if we put sort of a quantum mechanics kind of spin on it um objects can be in multiple places at once but once observed they're only in a single location so if you're having multiple lives potentially you're experiencing them at once but your consciousness is only at one point in time Something interesting I thought about, anyway. What are your thoughts? That might be above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, caller. Uh, appreciate it. Above your pay grade, eh? Maybe. And, and then if that's true, is can I have – is there a life somewhere where I'm, like, rich and thin? Because that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for what you are, I think you're absolutely perfect. I wouldn't touch anything. Oh, thanks. Let's, let's go to the phone. Hello there. You're on the air with Dish. Hi, my name's Shane. I'm calling from Salt Lake City. Hello there. Hi, I would just like to know, uh, is there a possibility of, of finding out someone who could help with the, the hypnotherapy that you were talking about earlier in the location here where I live? You mean, uh, you mean somebody uh, – well, what are you talking about? Are you wanting to be – have somebody regressed to a prior life? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm very interested in that and just wondering Oof. how a person could go about finding someone locally that, that could do that or was qualified to do that. I I don't know anybody there, um, but I would tell you to, you know, look on the Internet. But be, And you've got to be careful. You want that they're certified. It's really good if they have their own practice or they work out of a shop. That to me makes them a little more a little more legit. Look at their credentials before you let them put you under. Mm -hmm. But I'll bet you there's somebody out there in that neck of the woods. I mean, that's not a little town or a little area. 
um, you know, check metaphysical shops if there are any, or or maybe even herb shops. Okay. All okay. Right. Well, thank you you got to be you, you got to be much. careful, Paula. You know, mm. you, you you go to the wrong person, and you'll get a call like at midnight or something, and there'll be a key word said, and you'll be doing a naked dance in the middle of town square. <laughs> that, that <laughs> oh, that's my favorite good. trick to play on people. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for I the love call. Your show and thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so those kinds of uh, post-hypnotic suggestions are viable? They work? I don't know. They might in the moment. My post-hypnotics are that you'll remember all of this. Right. That you'll get more bits and pieces of it and make a more a more rich picture, if, if you will. And and these things that you've seen and, and observed will help you to make your life a better place to be living in. Here's, so. so here's a question. If you go back to a very violent place where you, for example, had a very violent death in a past life. I've had several of those. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> Is it always beneficial to know and remember those things, or could it be detrimental to remember it and, and sort of experience P PTSD or something? Of course, well, I, and that's I guess that's what they're way. having in the first place, and that's why they come to you. Right, but that's why you give all the... Pre-hypnotics and post-hypnotics coming in and out, and a lot of times if there was a reason or that somebody you know made you die for whatever reason, uh, then then I think it is beneficial to see why that happened and and what what to do next or or how to resolve it. But okay. it's because you were um, a guy with a sword and you were fighting for the king and you got you know blown up by a you know treasure. What is it? Anyway, somebody dropped a rock on your head. Uh, uh, then I don't know that it's beneficial, but it might give you an idea of why you're afraid of rocks falling out of the sky. Mm, sure might. I'm afraid yeah. of rocks falling out of the sky. I'm, all the time. Thousands of miles an hour. Josh, um, welcome to the program on Skype. You're on here. Hey, Art. Uh, dead air. Love it. Thank and, you. Uh, Tish, come back. See us Art. often, please. Um, well, thanks. My question, uh, Art's talked about this on a couple other shows, uh, OBEs, out-of-body experiences, good, bad, recommended? What's your take on those? Good one. I, I, I like them. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that I, I don't know that there's, they're bad. I can't imagine why there would be because, you know, no matter what, um, you, you can't be fearful that you're not going to come back to your body because you're going to snap back into your body. And a lot of times when you're doing it, when you're doing it out of body, you snap back into your body too soon. You're like, oh, man, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah, finished. I, yeah, my, my thing, I think Art felt this too. Like, I used to think they were garbage. Started listening to a couple shows Art's done on it. And then all of a sudden I'll wake up and I'm at that state where there's a vibration. Yes. And I get mm -hmm. freaked out mm -hmm. and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and I, you know, I get freaked out and I somehow, pull, you know, call it off. Right. So Same that's here. what I mean by bad. Like, I, I get scared when I'm ready to go, I guess. Well, it's kind of, I mean, it's a little daunting, but, have, I mean, have you ever woken yourself up falling back into your body? Because that's No. Oh, uh, you mean that sudden feeling of falling, that incredible, <laughs> terrible feeling of falling. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I've had that. I have, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's you falling back in your body is what you said. Right. Right. Oh, okay. And, and it See, wakes you up. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what just happened? Um, That's very interesting. I, I didn't know that. Um, thank yeah, you very much, Colin. Yeah, I, yeah I, okay. Next time, push through it and see if you can actually get out, because that's when the fun starts. Well, I hope so. <laughs> that, is, that, is when the, that is when the fun starts. Um, I have somewhere in my house an old uh, tape. Yes. Videotape, and gosh, I now wish I could tell you the name, but it was a, it's a practice for doing exactly that for out of body. And so there were some, you know, had some friends over. What do you do on Saturday night? Well, we practice trying to get out of our bodies. Uh, most people play cards and eat pizza. Right. But so we were doing. It. We said, okay, let's go to a place. Let's use these all these techniques, these you know, to go to a place that we agree on. Well, in those days, I was on Second Avenue, which is in downtown Nashville, or my shop was, and we stayed open until midnight because the 
the tourists warranted being open till midnight. And so we we did, and we just kind of, you know, visualized ourselves there. And I had a bird in the, in the I've always had a bird in the shop. So I had a bird, we kind of freaked the bird out. So the bird, bird is, you know, carrying on. And so a few minutes later, we came back and we're like, okay, and I saw her, and she's wearing a black dress, and it's kind of short. And she so we were comparing notes on what we had seen, and the phone rang, and it was the girl that worked at my shop until midnight who called to say, what have you done? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was great. We, <laughs> I'm like, well, we tried an experiment because the bird is going crazy, and we felt like somebody was staring at us, and I'm like, well, okay, well. And so next time when you do that, you need to call us and warn us that you're doing that. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so I, I, would, day. I would think the chief things that people would come to you for would be love, Money yep. and revenge. Um, so yeah, yeah, maybe maybe so. Getting getting even. How do I get even with them? And and so you know, from a logical point of view, which I'm not really a logical person, even though I am a triple Virgo. Uh, but my logic says, okay, the universe will take care of it. <clears throat> you don't need to get revenge, you know. And, I don't and know so that. yeah, I don't know you if know. I believe that. <laughs> Why, why do you want to throw yourself in the, you know, under that bus? So, but love and money, absolutely. But more people come to me who have been hurt, and they just want to understand why this other person hurt them. Now, see, I don't want to throw myself under the bus. I want to throw somebody else under well, the bus. Well, I've, I've been there with you, and I've wanted to throw people under the bus, too. Um, okay, and, so, and let's, so let's go with number you know, one. I have, I have a, can a candle that I make, and it's called Karma Balance. Oh, Oh, baby. Really? Don't, so, don't, so in other words, burn it and, I'm sorry. Uh, in other words, burning that candle or and doing associated things yes. will cause what's going to eventually occur anyway to occur a little sooner, perhaps. A little sooner, a little faster, and you might get to see it. Cool. But I also say, you know, make sure your own nose is clean <laughs> before you put this in. You know what? I'm, you know. Yes, I do. Okay, so right. so let's back up now to love. Uh, yes. It's a biggie, and I, I would wants never it. in a million years deny that. In fact, a bunch of questions on the uh, the wormhole that I get here are about love. Art, how is it possible for me to get back my ex girlfriend, for example? They're asking. Okay, you are. Well, we started at the very beginning of the show. You are dealing with somebody else's free will. Right. And so it's very, very difficult. You know, you can do a whole lot of stuff for yourself because it's you and your work on it. But to to try and bend somebody else to where you want them to go is more difficult. Um, and then my question always, always, do you want to live with a person knowing that the only reason they're with you is because you did a spell? And well, the relationship is false. Just a lot of people are going to say, I don't care. And yes. they do. I That's don't right. care. That's right. They're going to say that. So uh, let me ask this. Uh, the Bible says, I believe, that God gave us free will. Can Tish take it away? No. no? I can't. Eventually, you know, it's like it's like if you put a... Uh, I don't know, a bucket of water and a metal bucket, and it's fine for a long time. But eventually the seams are going to give, and it's going to come out. So sooner or later, the free will is going to is going to resurface. I mean, I guess unless you did uh, a spell every full moon to keep whatever you've got going on continuing to go on, which I think that's feasible. Oh, it is feasible. All right. You're going to get a lot of people very excited by that one on well, Skype. Holly. Hello there. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hi. Um, all right. First of all, you're five miles away from the microphone, so whatever it is you're using, find the little pinhole microphone and get really close to it to talk to us, okay? Okay. Can you hear me? No, not the right uh, pinhole. Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe this is just isn't going to work. Sorry about that. Well, it's going to work, but you just no, got to figure okay. out where the mic is. Uh, what are you using? Oh, just uh, my laptop. Okay. See, your laptop, usually around the top, 
Yeah. There's going to be a place for you close to the top, uh, near where you see a little hole, and talk there. It's going to sound way better. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, no? Better? Better. Okay. All right. Um, so I was wondering more on the topic of uh, free will. Right. Um, yeah, so you said that that's temporary. What what happens? Well, the the yeah. the the tearing apart of free will to accomplish a goal like keeping somebody would eventually wear off. I think is what you said, right, Dish? Yeah, I think it erodes. Okay, so then, like, what would happen after that? Would they just start hating the person who cast that spell no, on them? Well, no, they might just pack up and leave. Which is what they were going to do in this first place. But she also said that if it begins to erode, you can do another one and keep them around, apparently, until you're sick of them. You can't stand it anymore. All right. So you would, uh, okay, call her, as long as I've got you. Yep, yep, okay. Would you cast such a spell? Um, you know, I said, yeah. Oh, come on, tell the truth. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, you do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, very good. I, I, You get points for being honest. Thank you. Yeah, all right. right thank thanks. you. That's how strong love is. I mean, let's face it, Tish. Uh, people fall in love. They get so enamored, so out of their mind, crazy over somebody that they would say, sure. I, I don't care if it's a spell. I'll make him love me eventually, or her, whatever, <laughs> right? And, right, uh, right. And I understand that draw, that that pull. It's very, very strong. Like one of the strongest emotions a human being can have. Absolutely. And so, can I can I put another little um, codicil here? Sure. There are people in, who will tell you, "Oh, I can make your." Boyfriend, girlfriend, co- wife, whatever, come back to you. I can do it. I can cast the spells. It will cost you, you know, 20 gazillion dollars. Here's the thing. When I said that spells were fueled by emotion, no one else can put the kind of emotion into a spell that you can. I will, I'll, I'll be happy to sell you candles. And I'll make you a, a spell kit. Not happy, but I'll be like, yeah, you sure you want to do this? Um, and but I but I won't do it for you because well first of all I'm not going to get mixed up in your karma a and b I can't put the kind of energy into it so yes yeah, so all the people that send me emails tomorrow that want spells uh, about love y- you know there's uh, going to be a bunch of them uh, so in other words you, you're not going to do it for them but no. you will provide them with the things. And yes. the instructions to right. put themselves in that position if that is absolutely what they want. If they absolutely have to have it, and, you know, I can, I might add a, a cautionary tale or two, but, you know, ultimately we all make our own karma, right? Well, as I said, Tish, um, most of these people are so in love, crazy in love. Right, they, I understand. They don't, they don't care. They don't care. And so you're, you're, you're right. You're going to get a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, and you're saying you'll deal with them. I'll deal with them. Gotcha. Hold it right there. I am. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, she's something, isn't she? Tish Owen is my guest. I'm Art Bell. This is Midnight in the Desert. And again, we're muted just to go ahead and have the audio. We're running a little beyond time just to get the interview complete. We started a little late on the hour. Hence the new day in Dominion. Oh. We will hang with you at least until the interview does complete. It's got less than 20 minutes left. MITD 51. That's MITD 51. <laughs> you gotta, like, gotta love that actually. Skype up. Alright, so my guest is a witch. Tish Owen. And um, very, very interesting uh, witch at that. Somebody 
from Colorado named Joe wants to know, so, Tish, what did you do for Dell, Dell Computers? Oh, uh, I worked at convention. Uh-huh. And, and did readings at a convention because when you, when you have um, trade shows, you want people to come to your booth. Oh, and sure. So that, that was, we did that. That's, we did the same thing for the uh, Atlantic Sea Tourism Board, and, and that was a, um, a convention, a trade show for the, the Dish Network, satellite networks, a Dish Work Network. And so they wanted people to come to there. We were advertising Penny Dreadful for them. Okay, so, and, so and you, you weren't hexing Hewlett Packard or something? No, you know. Because they did have a problem. They did, but I think their problem was Carly Farina. <laughs> oh, did I say that was at my outside? Uh, oh, my God. That was great. Um, Sean, on Skype, you're on the air with Tish. Hello. Oh, hi, Art. Hi. I didn't think I would actually get on, but I well, appreciate you. When you that. dial, you could, you've got to always imagine that. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess my question would be, what direction would you recommend someone who has the potential for the crafts and natural abilities? Because I've always felt fear from exploring that That's side good, of myself. It's actually a good question. Yes. And can I – of what are you fearful? Okay. Put it this way. Um I come from a family of, like, uh, people in my bloodline who have a lot of power, and I don't know how else to put it because I'm first generation in the uh, United States. Right. Uh, And my mom, you know, she is all but psychic, and she actually doesn't recommend (laughs) that I, you know, go into that world, you know, and I just always feel fear, you know, from, like, to explore the unknown. But, okay, so a couple of things. One, it's not going to leave you alone. The, the psychic the psychic is not going to leave you alone. The psychic energy is just going to keep pushing till you finally go, okay, fine. So right. training is good. And also to understand that this is natural. It's like being left-handed or – being able to play the piano by ear or any of those kinds of things. It is part of your talent and ability, mm-hmm. and there is nothing to fear. And because I – because you're a really good – you're a good human, and so you shouldn't be afraid of the power. You're not going to do anything to misuse it. Right. I know. Okay? Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. I just don't know how to overcome that little um, – you know, it's it it is fear in a way. It but is. That's a, okay. So you have to work with it and practice, and when nothing blows up, you'll go, "Oh, wait a minute, this isn't so bad." <laughs> okay, uh, I I appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Colin. Right. You, I have the ability to misuse it, Tish. Well, then you know, Art, you and I are going to sit and have a long talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, to the phones we go, and uh, hello, you're on the air. And noisy. Hello? Uh, yeah, there is your voice. Hi. Hi, am I on the phone, on the line? You are. Oh, I want uh, you to know I'm one of those people that the church people that came up there to see her, I relocated from uh, Sacramento. And I relocated to Phoenix City, Alabama, mm. and just across, and just across the river is Columbus, Georgia. And there's a movie called The Phoenix City Story. And if you actually see this movie, you will see that when it first come on, it tell you there are more churches there per capita than any place in the country. And I'm going to tell you, you have these different statuses. In all of these churches, you're going to have people who are educated and people who are not educated. And the people who are well-educated and um, well-entrenched in these churches in every, every, every denomination, and they actually practice. And, again, when we look at the Bible, you will see that it is good and evil, and it tells you that that area is the Bible Belt. It is the Bible. Bar. Are you telling us that people in churches are practicing either black magic or uh, witchcraft? Is that what you're saying? Without a doubt. And the thing I'm saying is, you know, 
uh, they actually use the same Bible that the Christians who are really Christian and the people, again, Jesus is um, is the God that we're serving. And you will see uh, where in the Bible they said put the blood upon the doorposts and they actually have for the Passover. Uh, death actually passed over your house. Um, okay, I'm sorry, but we're short on time, so you're going to have to get to the point here. Well, the point I'm making is it's very prevalent, and I'm a victim or a survivor of that, but at the same time, all of your listeners, uh, when she was calling about protection, that's 91 songs. So when you are, I, I know. I like so you're, uh, excuse me, you're a victim of what? Of uh, uh, people constantly using witchcraft, and, and it's very, very, very prevalent. Okay, so you are you are saying the people in churches representing their Christianity or showing it off are using um, uh, witchcraft and black magic. Um, that is actually an interesting observation, Tish. Uh, a lot of that going on? I don't know. I don't go to church, Art. Well, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, from Nevertheless, I don't know. I think that a lot of people use magic that are not uh, – they're not uh, pagans, Wiccans, uh, witches, and – and again, we we come back to the karma thing. I mean, people are mean or not mean, oh, yeah. or good or bad, no matter what they are, what religion, not a religion, atheists, pagans, and and so you're going to have good and bad and people who are not ethical. Yeah, that's right. You and are. so, mm, if they think that gives them power to do that, then I'm I'm not terribly surprised by her uh, statement. I, I am disappointed. Well. I'm not surprised. I mean, even these good church-going folk, when they get up against the wall with something, um, might be inclined to turn to whatever they think will work. Might be. Yes, indeed. I would agree with that. Uh, um, Scott on Skype, you're on the air with Tish. Hi. Hi. Great show. Thank you. Um Thank- so, uh, talking about the uh, out of body experience thing, it, ten years or so ago, I had a couple of out of body experiences and kept waking up at night, um, feeling vibrations and stuff, and it scared the horse poo out of me. Uh, and, uh, um, <laughs> and so, I one night when I was having these vibrations and it was disturbing my sleep, I I sat up in bed and said, "Just leave me alone," out loud, and I never had it since then but then i started having trouble sleeping where it feels like i'm i'll I'll fall asleep and it's like i'm nodding off and you talked about feeling like you're falling and and waking up from that Mm -hmm. and and i I feel like i'm i'll wake up like i've been nodding off and you know (laughs) falling type of thing over and over and over again to where i have to take sleeping pills for it um Mm -hmm. so is is that related then to the to the out of body thing? Do you think, or or, or if it I, I feel is, like it is. is I think what you would I do? Your, I'm sorry. I think you scared yourself so badly mm-hmm. that that you're doing it unconsciously, obviously unconsciously, but subconsciously, and and I think that probably is you falling back into your body. So you know, I mean, things that you try and fight, they will they will surface eventually. So, so what would I do to try and get out of that? God, that's a, that is a, that's a that is an hour long question or answer. Um, I I think that the sleeping pills thing is not is not the best idea. I think that you need to come to terms with that that this is not something that's going to harm you. That and and that you should do some things to get into a relaxed state before you get into bed instead of going 400 miles an hour all day long and taking an Ambien and then laying down and going to sleep. I think that, you know, the the kind of routine that we had when we were kids, and we got a warm bath, and we got a story, and we got some milk, and we got, which is all telling your subconscious to slow down, we're going to sleep now. That that I feel like that would help you. That's good. It's, it I'll ain't magic, but you know what? It, it I think it will work, so. I'll give, I'll give that a try. Yeah, do so, give it a try, and let me know how it works for yeah. yeah, we'd love well, to hear it. Right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, I'm that way, Tish. I, um, if something is, uh, you, you know, I live a, I'm a real A-type personality. 
And if I get stressed, I cannot sleep. And I can take strong sleeping pills. Right. I can take some combination of stuff, everything to put you to sleep. And trust me, my mind will not let me sleep. It absolutely, it just, the medications don't make a damn bit of difference. That's why I think most of us have the same uh, issue. Can't turn your brain off. That's right. That's so right. So I'm, I'm going to give you a suggestion. I'm listening. Okay. Warm so milk. you lay down, you can't sleep, and you're tossing and turning. I just want you to breathe, and I want you to breathe in through your nose four, one, two, three, four. Hold it, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And it will relax you, and it will also give you something to concentrate on besides all the stuff that's driving you crazy. Sound like a drill sergeant. You can't count and breathe. Sound like a breathing. You sound like a breathing drill sergeant. <laughs> I'm a breathing coach now, but <laughs> but it really does. It really does work. I I, I promise. All right. Uh, let's go to Jackson, Tennessee. Hey, that'd be close to you, I suppose. Ooh, down the road, yeah. Hello. Hello, Art. Wonderful show. Thank you. Tish, I would like to know two things. I'm a little bit agnostic about spells and hypnotism. Would it okay. be possible? Would it be possible for somebody to hypnotize me if I don't totally believe in it, or put a spell on me if I don't really believe in it? Right. Yeah, I think that a lot of times with spells, hexes, curses, um, it, it's really helpful if the person that you're spelling, cursing, or hexing believes in it so you can, you know, they can buy into it and and, and, and suck that energy up. Uh, but is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Okay, well, that's a big one. So, in other words, whether or not the person, yeah, it's helpful if they believe in it, but it's but not an absolute must. Right, or, or that they know it's coming or they're intimidated by it or whatever, but no, it's not an absolute must. As far as the hypnosis, though, i got to tell you, the more open and receptive you are, you have to feel safe in this process. Right. And if you go in going, I, I don't know about that, I don't like this, it makes me whatever, it's it's going to be really tough to put you under. So. Very good, I thought so. I have one more question. Sure. We've talked about... Curses, hexes, spells, most of those carry a negative connotation. Is it possible to put a spell, a curse, a hex on somebody that has a positive spin for the recipient? Hmm, okay. Yeah. Curses and hexes, not so much. Spells, and, you know, I wrote this little book about spells, and the um, there are, you, you have to look at the karma, always the karma. And so, yes, if you've got your cousin and or your brother or your, whatever, and they're a drug addict, and so to do a spell for sobriety and for clarity, then, yes, I think that does have positive, even though you really are working against somebody's free will. Um, it's their free will to take that pill or shoot up that heroin or whatever it is. But, but I think that's a positive. At least at the very least, you're throwing some positive energy at it, okay? All right. Let's go overseas to Marto, wherever he is. Marto, where are you? Hello, Marto. Well, unfortunately, Marto left the line. That's too bad. Let's go to the uh, the phone, and you're on the air with Tish. Hi. Hello. Testing. Marto said testing, so he wasn't ready to go on the air. On, oh, okay. the, on the phone line, uh, hello. Going once. I just wanted to recommend that you name your Halloween show Mid Fright in the Desert. Not, Not happening. Not it happening. There. It's dead air. Mid Fright. Dead air. Mid Fright in the Desert. Dead air. On your word. Dead air. Dead air. <laughs> I feel like a duck. I feel like I'm having words thrown <laughs> over my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello there on uh, the, the phone line. You're on here. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi. A question. Okay. Um, how do you know if you um, are, have which blood in you? Mixed blood? Did you say mixed which blood? No, you which, said which blood. Which blood. Which, which blood. blood. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that you have witch blood in you. I think that, that that's a choice, like every, you know, other things, if you were going to be a Presbyterian or not. Um, and so is there a tendency? Do you have family? Do you have hereditary? You hear people talk about, talk about being a hereditary witch. Eh, okay. <coughs> Pardon. 
Um, so I don't know that, that there's a such a, I don't know that there's such of a thing as um, mm-hmm. <laughs> having <laughs> witch blood in you. One thing you don't want is witch blood on your hands. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Or on your feet or anything <laughs> else that's bad. But I think that you can look at do some work and look at practicing. Okay. You okay there, Colin? I'm sorry. Yes. Quite all right. Okay. Um, supposedly, if I turn up my microphone, you can't hear me, but apparently that doesn't well, work. Well, there is a mute function on, on Skype. Um, oh. Skype's wonderful. It makes it, it, That's what makes you sound like you're right here. Caller, anything else? Um, well, the, I, I come from a family that can see things, um, sense things, um, basically like psychic ability. Right. You mean like I see dead people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and so, and some of that, I, I think, some of that. If if you want to talk about heredity, I think that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm so glad I don't see dead people. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's, that's why you're a witch. Kind it's kind of, kind of flip, but I didn't I didn't mean it that way. But it's, it's kind of it's cool. All right, we're so out of time. One quick question from Portland, Oregon. I'm sorry, all the people waiting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have a neighbor who I've lived where I live for six years. This woman has been obsi- she lives right below me, yes. and she's just been obsessed with my with my life. And I didn't realize until oh maybe two years had passed that she was passing along things to my property manager um, about these allegations. Oh, she's um, she's got company all the time. She's selling drugs. She's single. She's a yeah. prostitute. So, so really, really quick, really quick, can I say what you do? But really quick. Said, which, okay. okay, now listen. Really okay. quick. A little bottle. Put her, put her, put uh-huh. her name on it. Put seven pinches okay. of salt. Seven clothes, seven, fill it up with water, seven put it in the freezer. Salt. You're talking, you can't okay. listen and talk at the same time. Okay. Okay. Start so again, Tish. Go ahead. Tell okay. her again. A little, a little bottle, put her name on a piece of paper, roll it up, put it in the bottle. Seven clothes, seven pieces of salt, fill it up with water, put it in the freezer. She's done. All right. Now, and if that okay. doesn't work, uh, put a hex on her for a horrible, well, painful, whatever. twitching know. death. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, it's been really my pleasure, Tish, having you on tonight. It's my my pleasure, too. What a wild night. Thank you very much, and we will do it again sometime. I want to say happy birthday to Susie Wright. Happy birthday, Susie. Good night, Tish. Good night. Thank you so much. Okay. There we go. I think we may have found our resident witch. I hope you all have a wonderful night, and we will be here once again tomorrow. It's going to be a real dead air kind of week. Good night. Good night from the Death Art. Thank you very much. And that was Tish Owen with Witchcrafts and Curses, originally aired October 27th, 2015. Hence the reference to Dead Air over and over, the name that Art had come up with for his Halloween show, which would have been just a few days after that particular episode. Punching above their weight so far, which is actually quite good. As long as they're going to keep punching above their weight, let's just keep running down this line. Hell, we might even finish round three. That would be freaking interesting. They win again. Three out of three.
and they're punching against teams at or definitely above. Their strength level, and only because of the totem are they actually even keeping in the fight. <laughs> they win again. It's just going to even win it again. So we'll just keep running around the line here. Rose one is next. As we stay a little bit in the proverbial bonus time here. If and when we fail here, that's when we'll probably call it for the evening. And they win again. The four water titans with Eden. Up to the top line we go now. And the Raji's down, Eden's down, we win again. Now we're punching above weight with 50,000, 51, 55, 59,000 teams. And we win again. Two teams left, 55 and a 59 from server one to 55. Uh, that one we didn't win. 131 out of the 250. And we win against a 59, but we lose against a 55. Beating teams 30 plus levels ahead of us. Let's try it again just in case.
Nope. I think that's probably where we're going to call the fight. That should be enough to get us our, yep, our spears, which is what we wanted. Alrighty. So, thank you, Art and Tish, for your portions to us this evening. And always make sure you do like, share, and subscribe. We picked up another percentage point in the last 24 hours. We definitely thank everybody on that. Keep it coming. Keep us going. And keep us growing. Remember, 5,000 views when we get Boxy to start paying attention to us there. 1,000 subscribers to have YouTube. Get your crypto for free at coinbase.com forward slash join forward slash cparsley. You can get your free, whether you want emeralds, you want uh, Valkyrie Favor, or anything else for free without paying for it. Hey, if you can get it for free, why not? And of course, it's always a great new world to release the Krakens. We'll see you tomorrow for another set of From Day One.